Welcome back to the Engineered Angler and part two of lure foil techniques. In part one, I showed you how I apply the foil and how I apply textures to flat pieces of foil, scale patterns of different sizes. I also showed you how you can add some scale effects on the lure itself after the foil is on with just simple tools like a knurled piece of metal. In this video, we're going to get a little more creative. We're going to create different patterns and we're going to make tools to make it easy to apply these different patterns either on the flat foil or on the foil on the lure itself. Applying different types of textures really creates an organic look that I think brings the lure into another level. So let's get back into the shop and pick up where we left off last time. So the plan is to make a tool that I can roll and it has the uh, texture on a roller and I like to use something as simple as a piece of metal like this this just came off an exacto knife and it's it has uh, some nice knurling on it and if I had a little tool with a handle on it I could actually roll it in exactly where I wanted it on the piece of foil but I also want to be able to apply these same sort of uh, scale effects that I get from these fabrics. So I did a little experiment with uh, a piece of PVC and I actually glued on the that same fabric. I think it would work. I haven't tried it actually, to be honest with you, but let's give, let's give it a shot. I think it'll work. And I think the answer is yeah. Gives me a nice effect. And if I had a handle to push on this little cylinder, I think uh, I could get a better job of it. All right, so I know this video is a little bit rambling and uh, kind of all over the place, but uh, look at the bright side. There's no math in this one. So now I'm going to go ahead and take this barrel that I already have uh, that fabric on, and I'm going to fill this with just my casting uh, resin. I'm going to put some tape on the bottom. So the idea is we fill it with resin, I drill a hole through the very middle, and then I'll be able to put it on a tool where I can just roll it. So I'm going to set this up, pour it, and then we'll go make that tool. Okay. That should do it. It should rise from there. Check that out. That looks like uh, got some kind of Stone Age technology. All right, so now I just need to get a bolt to go through here. So I got one. Let's cut it. That'll do it. Okay, so I've got this thing done. Uh, I've still got to clean up the resin on that uh, barrel uh, and I'll, I'm going to take this uh, chunk of dowel and I'm going to cut a section out of it to fit my, my tool and then I'm going to glue, just like I did on that piece of PVC, I'm going to glue uh, some of this pattern on there, probably the smaller one so I have that as well. I'll glue it on, I'll drill a hole and it'll work on this same tool. Alright, this guy is ready to be cleaned up and I have a hole drilled in it and I need to just take this little piece of dowel and put some glue and then we'll put that uh, fabric on it real quick. 
and this is just uh, just a general purpose uh, contact cement and let me do this outside right I'm just gonna wrap this and then I'll have to trim it later you don't have to really stretch it uh, it's better if you don't you just kind of lay it out with its normal pattern because if you stretch it uh, not only does it deform the pattern but it also sort of uh, squeezes down the threads that make the pattern and that uh, makes it less of a deep you know sort of embossing and you can do the trimming with either a razor blade or some sharp scissors which I wish I had but these are doing the job All right and so now uh, just to seat it I'm gonna roll it on this the next little trick is to take a little bit of cornstarch and put it on there just to keep anything from sticking to the contact cement so here's the one that I put on the piece of wood uh, this was the easiest one to make uh, because I had uh, this piece of dowel around and you can use just about anything if you're willing to fill in the inside of like an, a hollow item like PVC the only thing I would I would tell you is that when you pour in your resin uh, make sure it doesn't leak out because it will ruin it I had a little bit of leakage on that edge right there not too bad I can still use most of it sometimes so that you can have just a little more creative um, sort of freedom doing this kind of thing you gotta think outside the box a little bit and not just lay in the same pattern over and over and realize that there are things with patterns on them all over the place that you can use to emboss the foil that you're putting on your lures something that is simple as this little uh, bottle cap has kind of a cool little pattern on it uh, that would work really well uh, and all you'd have to do again is fill it with resin clean it up a little bit run a little dowel through it or a, a pin through it and use it as a pinwheel and you might get a really cool pattern out of things like this and they're practically free so this is a piece of aluminum that had some nice knurling on it there's a little thumb screw and I really like the knurling on this uh, so I just built a handle and it's got a couple of little tabs of aluminum to uh, to hold it in place and let's see what it looks like and I'm not gonna do the whole thing I'm gonna do a nice arc because that's what's nice about these little rollers I hope you can see that it leaves a really nice sharp dimpled look that looks very much like really small scales but you have to allow yourself to think a little bit outside the box if you look really close at this it's just a little little gear that I found uh, laying around my my hardware box and I stuck it on a old uh, paintbrush handle with a little pin in it and it actually creates a pretty interesting pattern that I think after painting would look pretty cool on a small freshwater bait. I've got one more little tool I want to make because this little nut here has a built-in star washer, a locking washer, that spins really freely and would be perfect for making uh, lateral lines on, on fish. So I made a handle with an offset attachment so that it, it aligns. When I set it in there, it'll align with my hand uh, and I've got a uh, bolt that it fits on and all I got to do is get this put together I need to cut this bolt right here and we'll put it together and then I'll show you what it how it works <laughs> Now I got a little spacer that's just a piece of aluminum tube and we'll slip that right on there and put a nut and we'll tighten that down and there we go. Now we got a little line maker. All right, let's go try it out. All right, so now I've got one more tool to add to my tool arsenal. And so let's take these and just do one and see what we can Come up with all right so let's take all this stuff and do a freehand uh collection of uh textures let's see first let's put in a lateral line and let's make it kind of curvy 
There you go, that looks pretty cool. So now let's lay in some of the big scale pattern and see what it looks like. And I'll follow the line. That looks kind of cool. And let's change to the small one. And let's try putting in the finer stuff below the ladder line. That looks pretty cool. Look at that. And then, just to have something a little different, let's throw in these little notches along the lateral line. <laughs> that looks pretty cool. And finally, some knurling along the top. So, you, you end up being able to do some really interesting uh, patterns and combining patterns. All right, this is one of my pan bellies. Uh, it's just a blank. It really wasn't meant to be a real lure. Uh, it was one of my tests. So here's a piece of foil cut out for it. So I'm going to lay it on the lure and I'm going to mark out where the features are by just pressing on uh, the foil and marking out where that eyeball is and where that gill starts. So now, first thing I want to do is uh, put in a lateral line. And I'm going to use this curve to give me a hand getting something in that flows and looks pretty cool. And in the meantime, I'm going to put it in with my little... I feel like I got a bunch of pasta shapers or something. I don't know. But anyway, I'm going to put it in with my little line maker. And there you go. So I got a pretty nice little ladder line. The next thing is I want to put the heavy, big um, pattern above the ladder line. So I'm going to go up and then go around where uh, the gill plate and the eye would be. And then I'll just fill in where I missed. Now let's put the other wheel on this will lay in a, a, a finer pattern on the bottom. So I'm going to again go in below the ladder line and then sweep around just underneath the gill. And I'll go this way so I can see it better. And then I can fill it a little bit. All right, that looks pretty cool. All right, let's put it on the lure and see what it looks like. So here's what our little lure looks like. Kind of interesting, I think, with a little paint. This could really look pretty cool. So thank you very much for hanging in for all this stuff. I know this uh, video sort of meandered a little bit, but hopefully you got a little bit of an idea of the kind of things you can just look for to get some really interesting embossing on your foil. If you have a method that you use, man, share it. Put it in the description. I'm sure everybody watching would love to know. And remember, if you're enjoying these things, uh, give me a thumbs up and subscribe if you haven't. And I'll catch you on the next video.